Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick, your favorite brother from another mother, coming to you via demand video on YouTube from the great country of the Philippines. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Praise God through whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all ye creatures here below. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, I just can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all about praise. Hallelujah. I give praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I give honor to your name. Oh, Lord, honor to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Brothers and sisters, the Lord says in his word, you know, he would take away our, you know, our garments of mourning and give us the garments of praise. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Praise, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It's praise. Glory to God in the highest, even as the angels praised as they announced the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ to the shepherds who were in the field. You know, the preachers only talk about this at the time of, of, of what you know man has designated, the time of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in December, which it was not in December, but... They only talk about it at that time, but brothers and sisters, hallelujah, thank God for the, the apostle Luke, our brother, the, the beloved physician Luke, who gave us those great words, uh, and many times, hallelujah, those uh, songs in his writing in, in, that the Lord had given him, and one of those is that time when the angels were abiding in the field with the shep uh, when the shepherds were abiding in the field with the sheep, and then... The angels, multitudes of angels appeared to them and announced that today in the city of David, that's Bethlehem, Bethlehem in Hebrew means the house of bread. Jesus is the bread of life. Hallelujah. Praise God. They announced to this day in the city of David, a son is born. You know, as you know, back there from, from Isaiah 9, 16 is one of them. There's, there's two different verses. Uh, you know, I didn't look those up in a while. I believe the other one is 11, 14, somewhere like in there. And it says that unto us a child is given, unto us a son is born. Hallelujah. And that is to Christ. They say today, the angel said today in the city of David, you know, a child is born. The Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then they began to sing, you know, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and good will toward all men. Hallelujah. Praise God, almighty brothers and sisters. Praise Him. You've got to praise Him. Early in the morning, my song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That's the song, holy, holy, holy. Praise God. Early in the morning, my song shall rise to thee. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Him, brothers and sisters. Praise Him today. Praise Him with the, as it says in the last Psalm 150, you know, praise Him on the tambourine. Praise Him with the harp. Praise Him with all manners of instruments. Don't Listen to that old, there's one old dead religious denomination that says if you use instruments, it's a sin. Can you believe it or not? Obviously, they didn't, they never read the Psalms, which are songs. Hallelujah. They never read all those things, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise Him on the tambourine. Praise Him with a harp. Hallelujah. Praise Him with your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got to praise Him. Lift His name up. We lift your name up. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Worship Him and praise Him, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I just wanted to say this. This is a, a you know an observation. You know, uh, those of you who've been following me, you know that uh, praise God, the Lord used me to plant several churches, uh, three Filipino churches, and then I helped plant another one. So four Filipino churches, three and a half. <laughs> then I also was a 
co-founder of, of a church that, that is, just happens to be this all black people and me, you know. And uh, in that church, specifically, brothers and sisters, uh, the pastor, and I was a, his assistant pastor and uh, when I was going to school, part of the time, and, and we observed this because he and I went around and we visited lots of churches and we, you know, uh, ministered a lot, went here and there. We were prayer partners for three or four years. Uh, Pastor Billy is his uh, first name. And uh, something that he and I both observed together was is that if you go to, uh, you know, a majority or, a, you know, uh, of a black church in America, there's, there's lots of good praise, but really not much worship. But when you go to uh, you know, full gospel, you know, predominantly white churches, there's lots of worship, but not a whole lot of praise. Now, why that is, I don't know. There's a cultural difference, brothers and sisters, and whatnot, historical differences. But the thing is, is that we cannot neglect worship for the sake of praise, and we cannot neglect praise for the sake of worship. Now, lots of people that watch me, you know, and I talk about it, you know, we usually get caught up in, um, you know, more worship than praise. You know, those of us who are seeking, you know, when you're talking about seeking the Lord's face, as it says, you know, your face only shall I seek. It's one verse. And then what I mean by that is instead of seeking, you know, the gifts of God or the blessings of God, we seek God himself. We seek, you know, to have that personal relationship with the Lord. So we're seeking his face. As it says in Second uh, Chronicles 7, 14, the, you know, the most famous revival verse, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. We need to turn from our wicked ways. We need to repent and seek my face, the Lord says. He was talking as King Solomon was praying to the Lord at the dedication of the temple. As King Solomon was the one saying these words, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will hear their land. That's the, 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 the number one revival verse, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, at the dedication of the temple during the prayer of King Solomon. It's the most famous one. So we seek his face. And another verse says, you know, I seek your face only, you know, shall I seek. So we're seeking the face of God. And that's worship. But praise, as, I, as I've told you guys before, when I made videos, it talks about uh, in the Psalms, you know, it's kind of an order of worship. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. That's from the Psalms too. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So entering his courts, he's talking about in the temple. Entering up into the temple of King Solomon. This is from one of the Psalms. And he's, you know, when you go in, you know, so I should do a whole teaching on that, but I guess that's what the Lord is leading me to do. You know, King Solomon's temple and even the tabernacle in the wilderness is really like a type and a shadow. You know, that's the videos I make. As the Lord has led me, you know, to show these things. God told Moses on the mountain, build the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant and all that stuff after the pattern that I showed you in heaven. So God has made a pattern. And all these things, the, the temple and all that, were real, literal places, but they were symbolic of things to come. That's why it's called a type and a shadow. They were types and shadows of the fulfillment of those things in Christ as Jesus stood there at the temple on what they call Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication and said, which is the Feast of Festival of Lights. He stood out there and said, I am the light of the world on that feast. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. You know, the show bread inside the temple in the holy place and then the, uh, uh, you know, the manna that fell from heaven as Jesus talked about in John chapter 6. That bread that they ate, they died. But this is a bread, if you eat this bread, you will never taste death. You'll never die. You know, this, my flesh is that bread. I am the bread of life, Jesus is telling them. John chapter 6. And my blood is the wine, symbolic, you know, in the, in the covenant of his shed blood for us, as in the Last Supper, where the Lord explains it again. This is my body that was given for you and broken for you. This is my, you know, my blood. The wine represents the blood. The, the bread represents the body of Christ. Anyway... So the temple also represents order of worship. It, enters, it represents getting closer to God, even as Jesus died on the cross. It says the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, symbolizing, you know, that 
as it says in the Bible, it symbolizes that, you know, the way to God was open. That veil was there, it tells us in Hebrews. That veil was there in the Old Testament to symbolize there was a separation between God and his people because of sin. Even when Moses, even as it says in Hebrews, you know, Moses wore a veil over his face because the people couldn't look on his face because the glory of God on his face. And as Paul, it says there in Hebrews, even today, um, and I believe it's also in Romans, I'm getting Romans and Hebrews combined here, uh, you know, that veil is still on their face. You know, there's still, there's still a veil separating them, a middle wall of partition, separating them from a true relationship with seeking his face, moving from praise to worship. Now, that middle wall of partition to make one new man, that's in, I believe that's in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, to become one new man with the, the Gentile believers and the Hebrew believers coming together as one, it's referring to the temple again, that middle wall of partition, because in the temple of King Solomon there was the court of the Gentiles, the court of the men's court, and then the women of the Israeli women's court, the court of Israel, which is for the male members of Israel who had no defect. If you had a, a you know, or your handicap or something, you couldn't go in there. If you were blind, crippled, or whatnot, you could not go into that place, into the court of Israel. There's the court of the Gentiles. And then the, the women's court. And that's when it talks about removing that wall of partition, removing that middle wall that separates God's people so we can come together. So that comes together for the Jewish people, for Israelites, that comes together through their accepting of Yeshua HaMashiach. But for us, brothers and sisters, it comes together when we enter with praise and worship and enter into His presence because our goal is to get into the Holy of Holies. I need to make a whole series of videos on this. Symbolically, the holies of holies is in is God's face. You know, getting a hold of Him. We're not talking about salvation. I'm talking about an order of, of praise and worship. I'm talking about getting into His presence. I need to do a whole series on this, brothers and sisters. But in my, my heart, when I got on here, was to talk about praise, which is, you know, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His court with praise. So first, thanksgiving. Hallelujah. When we, A good thing to do, even though we don't have to follow any formula when we pray is to give thanks. <laughs> That's another song. I don't know why I keep singing songs. Give thanks, Don Moen. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Be grateful. Thank you, Lord, for the... You know, that I do that sometimes, brothers and sisters, and I should do it every day, you know. Uh, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. All those are Bible verses. All these songs I'm singing are also Bible verses. You know, when we get up, we should thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the oceans. You know, if you live near the ocean, thank you, Lord, for the ocean. You see the ocean. Thank you, Lord, for the songbirds that we might hear singing. Thank you, Lord, for the flowers. All these things God created, as it tells us in Job, God put the crook in the snake. You know, he put the color in the, in the rainbow. He put the, you know, the color and shape of flowers. All these beautiful things that are in this creation. Even in the fallen world, you know, God gave us all the things that we make food out of, etc., you know, God made a way for us to have tomatoes to make spaghetti sauce, right? Thank God Almighty for all the things that the Lord has given us. Be grateful. Be thankful for all that God has given you. I need to do a whole series on this, brothers and sisters. I'm just stumbling into it, you know, here. Because <laughs> it was in my mind to get on here from the Lord and in my heart to talk about praise, which is really step two. So thankfulness, praise, repentance is next. The brazen altar where we offer, you know, those sacrifices of praise. and uh, Romans chapter 12, re alluding, you know, is a, from the type and shadow of the animal sacrifices they made. They're at the brazen altar where they would offer the sacrifices and then they would, you know, the, the priest would, and the person who offered it, they would lay hands on it. Then they would sacrifice the sheep or, or the different types of offerings. There's five different types of offerings that they would offer before the Lord. Sin offering, trespass offering. Uh, etc. 
and all there in the law of Moses. All of those are types and shadows of things in the, of the New Testament. Then as we go past the brazen altar, we go into the holy place, which is the, where the showbread is, the, the outs, inside the first room in the temple of Solomon. There's the showbread, which represents the manna, and then, of course, the bread of life, too. And it represents the Word of God, as Jesus is the Word of God. It came, became flesh and dwelt among us, as John chapter 1 tells us. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then down there, I believe it's verse 14 or 13 or 14, it says, John chapter 1, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have the menorah there, the big seven branch menorah filled with oil, burning oil all the time, representing the Spirit of God, the seven spirits of God, as the Bible tells us. See that in Zechariah and in Revelation. And then the, uh, what those seven different manifestations of the Holy Spirit, we actually see, I believe, see now, I'm saying all these Bible verses, I haven't looked them up in a long time. Let's see, I believe that's in Isaiah, I want to say 11, but then I want to say 23. But it's in Isaiah, about the seven spirits of God. You can Google any of these things I say. It's been a while since I looked at that. Anyhow, so then... You also have the altar of incense where prayers are offered up, brothers and sisters. The prayers are offered up. Prayers of the saints. And that represents, the incense represents prayer. We see that there and then we see it in, in, uh, in Revelation. The Bible interprets itself. We see that the angel takes the coals from the altar which represents the prayers of the saints and casts it down to the earth as part of the judgments of God. Near the very end of the, of, of the vile ju judgments of God in the last set of judgments that God gives in the book of Revelation. You know, there's seven of each, seven, uh, seven seals, seven uh, trumpets, and then seven vials or bowls of his wrath of judgment. And then the next stop in the temple of King Solomon is through that veil into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant is. We have the mercy seat on top representing the grace and the seat of the Lord, to be, the judgment seat of Christ. That mercy seat under that is the Ten Commandments and the law. And, and inside there is the rod of Aaron that budded, a jar of manna, and the two tablets that the Ten Commandments were on is inside that ark, in the Ark of the Covenant, brothers and sisters. All that under the law, the Arionic priesthood, and the manna provision in the wilderness is all there under God's grace, under the mercy seat, which is sprinkled with the blood, sprinkled with the blood of those bulls and goats that represents the blood of Yeshua on the mercy seat over that atonement. That's why when the Bible says, I'm doing this theology stuff now, I don't know what I'm doing. You know my videos. But that atonement seat with the two cherubims on top, known as the mercy seat, that lid of the Ark of the Covenant represents, when it says in the King James the word propitiation, that Jesus is the propitiation of God's wrath from us. That's what it's talking about. That covering is blocking you know, the glory of God would fill that Holy of Holies. And then if, you know, the high priest went in there unworthily, he would be struck dead, you know. He would just be dead. They'd have to drag him out. And uh, that's why they, you know, they wore these things and they could just pull him out. They wore little bells and stuff. You could hear him in there. So if the high priest didn't hear his little bells for a while, you know, they'd have to, you know, try to reach under there and pull him back out. <laughs> if the Lord were to strike him dead for being, uh, uh, you know, unprepared and, and, and unworthy and unrepentive when he went in there on that uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the, you know, the most holy day in the Old Testament was Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when they would go, the high priest would go in there once a year for the sins of himself and then for the people uh, and apply the blood literally directly to the ark, representing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But since that time, it's been put to an end, brothers and sisters. That's why those things are under inside the ark under the propitiation as, as jesus said it says in john chapter 3 you know that when we're saved you know we're free from judgment but anyone that does not believe on jesus the wrath of god abides on them or remains on them because jesus is a propitiation he's that covering over us when we're in him when we're inside christ jesus when we're in the body of Christ, then the wrath of God does not remain on us because we're inside there, we're under that covering. And the law 
and the Arianic priesthood, the Old Testament priesthood of the high priest and all that, and the man in the wilderness and all those things are under, below the mercy seat of Christ. Jesus is above all those things. Hallelujah. Praise God. we got a victory over all those things through the blood of Yeshua, HaMashiach, the Messiah. So, brothers and sisters, I started out talking about praise, and then somehow, by the Spirit of God, I started going through this whole thing. And I went through it quickly, so praise God. Brothers and sisters, some of you who know lots of things, you just pick, you know, you just get a little nugget here and there. Some people don't know, never heard any of these things, and that's how it is. When you're teaching or anything, you know, there's people at all kinds of levels who get all different kinds of things. So sometimes, you know, I always say this to people uh, in many videos, when I talked about the videos about what the Lord has shown me about the Antichrist, you know, lots of Christians will say, we're not looking for the Antichrist, we're looking for the Christ. And then I always say, you know, if it's not for you, it's for somebody else, you know. Just glean the nuggets that, that you need to get and let other people glean the nuggets that they need to get. You know, God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love Him, who are called according to His purposes. Romans 8, 28. So God will make a way, brothers and sisters. God will make a way. And the Lord has just been speaking to me. And I'm going to put this on here. I guess I could, you know, uh, I don't make videos for numbers. So I can make some video. The Lord just, get, you know, spoke to me just tonight, brothers and sisters, about the announcing of the new world order is coming. I just want to put this on here. And the Lord was just telling me. I heard the Lord saying that uh, the curtain's about to be raised. And, an, uh, and the Lord showed me the spirit of witchcraft announcing the new world order. And I'll say this. You know, through the Super Bowl halftime stuff and all these things, there's people make videos about all that stuff. All those musical singers, lots, all, most of this rock and rap and any kind, you know, these people become an altered personality. I, you know, I talked about this in the book that I wrote, and I mentioned this in videos way back, and I guess I should make another video. Like Beyonce, her demon spirit is Sasha Fierce. I, I know we wrote about that in the book. And I wrote about Eminem, becomes Marshall Mathers, uh, Slim Shady, that's his alter ego. And these people have already been announcing, you know, the Lord was showing me the spirit of witchcraft, announcing the new world order. And I even heard it in Latin, you know. This what's on the back of the dollar bill? Novus seclorum unum uh, annum, whatever it is. You have to look on the back of the dollar bill. You can look it up. Announcing a new order for the ages. You know, so that's what I was hearing, and then I saw this, you know, spirit of witchcraft, and then I saw an image of Africa, the continent of Africa, and then I heard the curtain is opening the curtain. So I just throw that out there. I probably need to make another video. I need to talk about the. The stuff that the Lord gave me for that book that, I, that we wrote about, you know, uh, Final Boarding Call, Satan's Plan for the Ages and Our Last Mission. And uh, I need to talk to us a little bit about that. The Lord is, is putting in my heart to talk about it. I'll be back with that, brothers and sisters. I'll make a separate video, you know, for the short bus riders. Short version, maybe. <laughs> you know, this, uh, just those interesting uh, points that connect to the world, you know, as an evangelism tool, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. You know that I love you all. Praise the Lord. Keep praising His name. Keep praising His name. Hallelujah. For He's coming. He's coming for the real church of the firstborn. You know, the Lord gave me the name for this church. I'm not talking about just that. But the real church of the firstborn is the rapture church. Hebrews chapter 12. He's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, brothers and sisters. We have to get ready. Get prepared. Prepare your hearts and minds and even your natural bodies. Prepare yourself to meet the Lord. You know, when I say, there's always people, you know, when I say these things, I always think about that one person is kind of a, what's the right word? Knucklehead, I guess is the right word. You know, preparing our body means, is another way of saying about sin. You know, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice to God, acceptable, you know, to Him. Uh, Romans chapter 12. You know, so it's separating ourselves from sin. It's not that our physical bodies that we're in right now is going to be rapture. We're going to take this off, this corruptible, and put on incorruptible, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll take off this corruptible earthen vessel made out of dirt and put on our glorified bodies the Lord is going to give us. And when we see Him, we will be as Him. When we see Him, we'll be like Him, John tells us. Praise God when we see Him in the air. 
Meet him in the clouds. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Start praising him today. Not the fact that all these dates it's been said hasn't happened, but praise him that he will rapture us. We are going home. We are going home. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going home. I'm going home. Hallelujah. We're going home. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him.